Hello and welcome to the Autocar Show. Now there's a big war going on between the German Trinity in the luxury segment with each one trying to outdo the other. Well, Mercedes is now stepping into the fray in the segment where the E-Class has just got an upgrade. Now every little bit counts in this war and this is not just a small change, there are quite a few differences. Let's see what they add up to. Well, for starters, it looks like an entirely new car that underwent the scalpel looking 65 years old and came out looking 18 again. The new E is bolder and much more in your face than ever before. Beginning with the front, the large slatted chrome grille with the integrated logo that garnishes the snout and is accentuated by the bonnet lines that rake towards it. The arrow form LED lights give it a distinctive air and the trapezoidal air intakes have grown larger too. The side profile remains pretty similar except for the two different tyre sizes front and rear with the classy 5-spoke alloys and a sheet metal change to get rid of the bulges around the rear wheel arch. The rear gets new LED tail lamps as well. On the inside, it's a familiar console with a few smart changes. The version we had had a metallic garnish across the dash, but one can also get brushwood finish. The steering is now a sportier, smaller diameter, thicker three-spoke one. And the meters get white dials with really nice backlights. The command system is improved and can now sync with your mobile and other devices and you get navigation as well. The gear lever has moved to the steering which makes space for two cup holders. The quality remains top class all around and the build feels solid. The seats of the E were always comfortable but have also been tweaked. The front seat support is fabulous and the rear seats now get a contoured bench as opposed to the squarish one that was there before. Under the hood, the power plant of the 250 CDI remains the same, with the same output as before. So at first impressions when you get into this car and drive, is that it's more silent in the cabin. Even at higher revs, you don't hear the engine as much. It feels more refined. 204 bhp isn't much, but it's the 51 kgm of torque that makes this motor fun to drive and the 7 G-Tronic gearbox optimizes the power well. It feels more peppy now to drive and the 7 G-Tronic works quite well. If you slow down, put your foot down, it shifts down and gets a move on quite easily. So downshift or upshift, it's smooth, it's seamless and it's pretty quick too. What makes the performance feel great is that the max torque kicks in at a very low 1600 RPM. So you build speed effortlessly and small flexes of your right foot give you good responses. However, past the 4000 RPM mark, the responses do get slower and path throttle always feels better than flat out accelerations. There's a nice new sporty steering. It's smaller, feels nicer to hold and of course the system's gotten sharper as well. Just points the car exactly where you want it to go. So driving on a nice windy section of road now is a whole load of fun in this car. The new electric steering is light and yet weighs up well, giving you easy driving in traffic and fun around the corners too. It makes this big car feel agile and nimble, which was missing earlier. And the slack at dead centre is gone. So the end result is really a confidence-inspiring one and it tempts you to push this car. It's just so composed around the corners. Minimal roll, it's just very, very flat, feels very close to the road. You just don't feel disconnected at all. In fact, that's the beauty about this. It's become a whole load more fun to drive. It's
still a little soft but is much better than before and the E takes corners in a much more planted and composed manner than before. It doesn't run wide. Now the car has actually grown in length but it feels more compact to drive. With the way the bonnet is shaped, it now feels narrower in the front and it wraps itself around you pretty nicely. Merck say they haven't made many changes to the suspension. The suspension itself is a direct control one, which adapts damping rates depending on load and it works really well on the new E, making it not only agile but more comfortable to ride in as well. Now, on a really bad, bumpy section of road like I am now, I have to say that I am amazed by the ride quality of this car. And the bumps and potholes seem like they're in another world. You do feel the car moving around, but nothing's really filtering in here. The backseat experience will definitely be a comfortable one. Unfortunately, some of the negatives remain there, like the large transmission tunnel that hampers space for the third passenger and the lacklustre rear AC that cools well only on low and on high fan speeds that tends to be very noisy. But apart from those few niggling negatives, the new E's improved all around and it packs in quite a few new features too. Paddle shifts, the eco mode with start-stop, intelligent lights that follow the road, Active Park Assist, meaning that you can drive to a spot, the car will gauge it, put it into gear and then the car can park itself. Reverse Camera, Attention Assist, Command Online that will allow you to browse the net and of course there are the regulars like the 8 airbags, the ESP, the ASR, the Brake Assist as well. It's really hard to fault this new E and the competition is definitely going to have to sit up and take notice of this competitor that has grown younger and more modern. Well, many small changes make a big difference. It looks fresher, younger, more appealing, the interiors are nicer and if it could, it feels even more refined than before and nicer to drive. Well, this brings the E-Class right back bang into the game.